This A-level chemistry slash standard level IB video is on all things to do with the mass spectrometer. And remember that this is simply a powerful analytical tool used to identify unknown compounds in samples. And if you have a different sample which you know which elements it contains, the mass spectrometer will enable you to see how much there is of each element. So let's look at an overview of the mass spectrometer and look at all the different steps that take place when a sample is placed into the mass spectrometer. So first of all, our sample has to be vaporised. It needs to be in gaseous form to ensure that the maximum number of collisions occur when electrons are fired at the sample. So the sample enters the ionisation chamber as a gas. As I've just mentioned the word ionisation, clearly this must be the second step, so ionisation. Now remember that an ion is a charged particle, and in the case of a mass spectrometer, we're after a positive ion, so that means that our atoms need to have lost electrons, because remember that they're negatively charged. In order to cause our sample to be ionised, we need to fire high-speed electrons at the sample, they bombard the sample and cause the atoms to lose electrons, and hence they become positive ions. This even works for the noble gases group zero, which ordinarily wouldn't become ions. If you bombard them with high enough speed electrons, they will indeed become ions. Sometimes when the high speed electrons bombard the atoms, they are so fast and they have so much energy that the ions actually split into smaller pieces. This isn't a good thing. We're not actually after this effect, but do be aware of what this is called, and it is called fragmentation. And if the ions split up into even smaller ions, then these can be detected on the trace, so be aware of that when you are looking at the trace after the sample has been through the mass spectrometer. In the third stage, the ions are accelerated, so they speed up, and that's to ensure that they all have the same kinetic energy. The fourth state is deflection, and as the ions pass by some magnetic plates, they are deflected, and be aware of the amount of deflection. This is proportional to both the mass and the charge of the ion. So smaller mass ions will be deflected more than larger mass ions, and ions with a larger charge will be deflected more than ions with a smaller charge. So for example, something that has a mass of 56, but has a charge of 2+, plus, its mass to charge ratio will be 28. If we take a separate sample, and the atoms have a mass of 28, but this time their charge is 1+, plus, they will also have a mass to charge ratio of 28. So make sure you work out that ratio so you can work out the amount of deflection that would take place. And obviously remember that ions with larger charges are formed by electrons knocking out more than one electron. So a 2 plus ion is formed by two electrons being knocked out of the atom. A 3 plus ion is formed by three electrons being knocked out of the atom. The final stage is detection. So the beam of ions which passes through the machine is detected electrically and then their abundance can be calculated and abundance is just a fancy way of saying how much there is of each ion. And then the graphs produced post-detection can be used to determine what compounds make up a sample or to quantify how much there is of each element. And now I'm actually going to show you some past paper questions so you can actually see how you'll be asked this. So, question number one. What is the correct sequence for the processes occurring in a mass spectrometer? You know me, I like to work out the answer before I scramble my brain by looking at the options. So what did I just say? Well, I said first of all that vaporisation has to occur. Then I said ionization. Then it was acceleration, deflection, and lastly, detection. detection. So which of those follows that order? And it is option A. Describe the following stages in the operation of a mass spectrometer. Remember that the atoms are bombarded with high speed electrons, which knocks an electron away from the atom forming a positive ion. If two electrons are knocked out, then you form a plus two charge. Deflection now, remember that is when the high speed ions are deflected by the magnetic plates. And remember the smaller the mass and the higher the charge, so the larger the mass to charge ratio, the more the ion is deflected. So with acceleration, remember that the positively charged ions are sped up, they are accelerated away from the ionization chamber, and this is to ensure that they have the same kinetic energy. So, question four. The mass spectrum of a sample of gallium is shown. So here's a typical relative abundance graph that you'll be shown. What isotopes are present in this element? Do remember that an isotope is atoms of the same element with the same number of protons and a different number of neutrons. So all you have to do here is look at the masses 
and that's the mass to charge ratio on the x-axis. So you simply have to write GA to represent the symbol of gallium and then in the top left hand corner write those two masses, so 69 and 71. So those are the two isotopes which are present. Calculate the relative atomic mass of this element, give your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures and make sure you show your working. So this is straightforward, you simply need to multiply the percentage of each isotope by its mass. So we're timesing that by 71 and then divide it by the total, which should be 100, but double check that it is. It is in this case. And once you've done that, you get an answer which is 69.8 and I'm going to do that to three significant figures. Five, the mass spectrum of the element chlorine is shown. Identify the ion responsible for the peak at. Now, don't get confused here. Remember, it's Cl2, which means that it's a diatomic molecule. So that actually means that you could have a diatomic molecule made up of 235 Cls, 237 Cls, and a 35 Cl and a 37 Cl, because you don't know which way they are combining when they are bonding. So make sure you're aware of the background chemistry when you look at these questions. So now when we identify the ion responsible for the peak at each of these mass to charge ratios, this makes sense that we have a 70, a 72 and a 74 because look what happens when you add these up. That equals 70, this equals 74 and this equals 72. So for the mass to charge ratio of 70, clearly that's going to be the 35 Cl. Remember it's an ion so it needs to have a positive charge and it will be both of them, uh, the 35 Cl's. The 72 will be 35 Cl, 37 Cl, as I've shown above. And then lastly, the MZ74, that will be two 37 Cl's. Question six, the mass spectrum shown is of a hydrocarbon, that's important, so it contains hydrogen and carbon only, that has been produced via electron impact ionization. What is the relative molecular mass of this compound? This is probably a bit too much information, but if you see a tiny peak at the end, furthest right, be aware that that is carbon-13, so it's not actually going to be the substance that you're after. So what you want is the largest peak to the left of that, which is actually this one, so here is your answer. So the molecular mass is 56. Why are there peaks with much lower MZ ratios? Well, notice it is a hydrocarbon, which means that it's likely when the ions are created and when the electrons bombard them, you might see some fragmentation occurring, which is when smaller ions are produced. And what were those smaller ions likely to be? So they're likely to be hydrogen and also carbon. And I've already mentioned that that could be carbon-13. In terms of hydrogen, it could actually be hydrogen-2. As well as being 2 hydrogen or 13 carbon, really, if you've got a large hydrocarbon, it could be any smaller division of that hydrocarbon. So, for example, if you started off with C14H30, a smaller fragment could involve ethane, for example, C2H6. But remember, it would have to have a charge in order to be picked up by the mass spectrometer. Right, hope you found this video helpful, guys. Don't forget to give it a like and sub if you haven't already, and I'll be back soon with another video. Is that all right?